particularly grotesque about this was that the 14th Amendment was passed to protect newly freed slaves. So, for instance, between uh, 1890 and 1910, there were 307 cases brought before the court under the 14th Amendment. 288 of these brought by corporations, 19 by African Americans. Six hundred thousand people were killed to get rights for people. And then with strokes of the pen over the next 30 years, judges applied those rights to capital and property while stripping them from people. Everybody makes a mistake once in a while, but I just can't be personally responsible. That's one of the weaknesses of a partnership, isn't it, Sid? Well, maybe you'd better incorporate the store. Incorporate? Yes. Incorporating would give you the big advantage of what you want right now, limited liability. You start with a group of people who want to invest their money in a company. Then these people apply for a charter as a corporation. This government issues a charter to that corporation. Now that corporation operates legally as an individual person. It is not a group of people. It is under the law a legal person. Imperial Steel Incorporated has many of the legal rights of a person. It can buy and sell property. It can borrow money. It can sue in court and be sued. It carries on a business. Imperial Steel, along with thousands of other legal persons, is a part of our daily living. It is a member of our society. Having acquired the legal rights and protections of a person, the question arises, what kind of person is the corporation? Corporations were given the rights of immortal persons, but then special kinds of persons, persons who have no moral conscience. These are a special kind of persons which are designed by law to be concerned only for their stockholders and not, say, what are sometimes called their stakeholders, like the community or the workforce or whatever. The great problem of having corporate citizens is that they aren't like the rest of us. As Baron Thurlow in England is supposed to have said, they have no soul to save and they have no body to incarcerate. I believe the mistake that a lot of people make when they think about corporations is they, th they think, you know, corporations are like us. General Electric is a kind old man with lots of stories. Nike. Young. Energetic. Microsoft. Aggressive. McDonald's. Young, outgoing, uh, enthusiastic. Monsanto. Immaculately dressed. Disney. Goofy. The body shop. Uh, deceptive. Very lovely. <laughs> Do you know who the body shop is? Nope. <laughs> they think they have feelings, they have politics, they have belief systems. They really only have one thing, the bottom line how to make as much money as they can in any given quarter. That's it. Of course they make a profit, and it's a good thing. That's the incentive that makes capitalism work, to give us more of the things that we need. That's the incentive that other economic systems lack. People accuse us of only paying attention to the, the economic lag because they think that's what a business person's mindset is. It's just money. And it's not so, because we as business people know that we need to certainly address the environment, but also we, we need to be seen as constructive members of, of society. There are companies that, that do good for the communities. They, they produce services and goods that are of value to all of us that make our lives better, and that's a good thing. The problem comes in, in the profit motivation here, because these people there's no such thing as enough. And I always counter 
point out, there's no organization on this planet that can neglect its economic foundation. Even someone, you know, living under a banyan tree is dependent on, on support from someone. The economic leg has to be addressed by everyone. It's not just a business issue. But unlike someone under a banyan tree, all publicly traded corporations have been structured through a series of legal decisions to have a peculiar and disturbing characteristic. They are required by law to place the financial interests of their owners above competing interests. In fact, the corporation is legally bound to put its bottom line ahead of everything else, even the public good. That's not a law of nature. That's a very specific decision, in fact, the judicial decision. Uh, so they're concerned only for the short-term profit of their stockholders, who are very highly concentrated. To whom do these companies owe um, loyalty? What does loyalty mean? Well, it, it turns out that that was a rather naive concept anyway, as corporations are always owed obligation to themselves to get large and to get profitable. In doing this, it tends to be more profitable to the extent it can make pe other people pay the bills for its impact on society. There's a terrible word that economists use for this called externalities. An externality is, a, is the effect of a transaction between two individuals on a third party who has not consented to or played any role in the carrying out of that transaction. And there are real problems in that area, there's no doubt about it. Running a business is a tough proposition. There are costs to be minimized at every turn. And at some point, the corporation says, you know, let somebody else deal with that. Let's let somebody else supply the military power to the Middle East to protect the oil at its source. Let's let somebody else build the roads that we can drive these automobiles on. Let's let somebody else have those problems. And that is where externalities come from, that notion of let somebody else deal with that. I got all I can handle myself. A corporation is an externalizing machine in the same way that a shark is a killing machine. Each one is designed in a very efficient way to accomplish particular objectives. In the achievement of those objectives, uh, there isn't any question of malevolence or of will. The enterprise has within it and the shark has within it those characteristics that enable it to do that for which it was designed. So the pressure's on the corporation to deliver results now and to externalize any cost that this unwary or uncaring public will allow it to externalize. To determine the kind of personality that drives the corporation to behave like an externalizing machine, we can analyze it like a psychiatrist would a patient. We can even formulate a diagnosis on the basis of typical case histories of harm it has inflicted on others, selected from a universe of corporate activity. Well, this is the office of the National Labor Committee here in the garment area of New York City. It's a little bit uh, disheveled. These are all uh, from different campaigns. To make this stuff concrete as possible, we purchase all of the products from the, the factories that we're talking about. This shirt sells for $14.99, and the women who made the shirt got paid three cents. Liz Claiborne jackets made in El Salvador. The jackets are $178, and the workers were paid 74 cents for every jacket they made. Alpine car stereos, 31 cents an hour. It's not just sneakers, it's not just apparel, it's, it's everything. We were in Honduras, and some workers, they knew the kind of work we did, and they approached us, these young workers, and they said, uh, 